Welcome back to Flash Film Reviews. I am Nick, and this is Riley. I'm yep. Riley. He's Riley. That's me. We watched Evil Dead 2013 remake. Is that what it, what's it called? Is it just called it's Evil just Dead? Called I Evil forgot. Dead. Not even the Evil Dead, like the original. It's just yeah. Evil Dead. Directed by some guy. I don't have it with me. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce this. It's like Fede Alvarez. Directed by Fede Alvarez. Fede Alvarez. But yeah, this this movie, it is the remake based on obviously the Evil Dead, the classic yeah. film series, written and directed and produced by Sam Raimi. But this time, Sam Raimi didn't have really much involvement or it anything, right? He just produced it. Team, and then so was Bruce Campbell, which got us excited because he was in the like the for some reason he's in the cast list. For some inexplicable <laughs> reason, when we looked it up on Google, yeah, he was uh, he was the first person to show up on the cast list on Google. Yeah, <laughs> we're hopeful that he inv- was involved in the movie. Like you know, he would be showing, but it was a bit of a. Uh, I I'm mean, sure they were involved to some degree, but you know, it's kind of refreshing because uh, we've finally come to a movie that I didn't really like. That's true. To there's something there's more to honest. talk about it. <laughs> this movie was a little bit lame. It was a little it bit was... lame. It's just a it's just a inferior remake of the first movie. Like it doesn't really try anything creative. It doesn't do anything new. It sort of missed the whole core of the previous series, what made it so good. They the the, the one thing I'll give them credit for is that this remake does go quite hard on the gore and the blood yeah that is definitely my favorite part about the movie is just how gross it is (laughs) that's quite entertaining (laughs) sometimes yeah it is they they do strange way (laughs) (laughs) yeah yeah don't analyze us but um yeah it's like the first movie but without the tongue-in-cheek attitude it's it tries to play it straight but it just comes off as a generic horror movie like it has all the tropes that you can see coming from a million miles away. We could make a checklist of every single, uh, like, just um, cliche that happens in this film, and you can just see it happening just easily. And, you know, it kind of kills the enjoyment because it's just not original. It's not creative. I mean, it's already a remake of a better movie, and they've already not got that going for them. And it's just yeah. not, it's just, it's just contrived. Yeah, they're not really putting themselves in a good position. It's That's pretty yeah, gory, exactly though. what you said. And in the best parts... It's got, it's got blood. The best parts of the movie are when, like, the, the tongue-in-cheek ad- attitude of the original movie seeps into the movie. It's like a little... Like a little comes through the cracks. It comes through the cracks of campiness, and then something campy yeah. will happen, and then it will go back to trying to be serious again. Yeah. But um, this this movie has a, a very extensive cast. It's got um, it's got like four people. Kurt. Yeah, yeah, we've got four Kurt people. Cobain. Uh, he's <laughs> he, he's in the movie. It's just this dude with uh, you know, blonde long hair and yeah. the classic Kurt Cobain look. Yeah. So of course that's what we called him. We just called him. I don't even know what his character's name is. I think it's like Kurt Cobain. <laughs> that's it. That's who he is. Yeah. I think his first name's Kurt and his last name's Cobain. And then yeah. you've got you've got just fantastic characters like girlfriend Yo, and yes. um, nurse yep. and uh, David, <laughs> David, who is possibly the stupidest human being alive. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, and I was just fucking. You've got disappointed. Uh, I forgot her Mia. name. Mia. Who Mia, the sister, is the- simultaneously sort of the main character, but also not really because she's the main villain for most of the movie. But then she comes back, and then she's the main character again. Yeah, it makes no sense. So it's like me is the main character, and then Mia gets possessed, and then David's the main character, but David's the worst, and then Mia comes back. <laughs> yeah i'd say in the section where david's <laughs> the, the main movie. character that kurt cobain is a better main character than david is yeah i think maybe kurt cobain is the main character who knows like i don't know at that point <laughs> that's what it seems like right good old kurt is probably the only character that actually has a character or at least a yeah 
something to do. He's the only one with something to do. Yeah, honestly. I mean, literally, the girlfriend character, we forgot the name because, yeah, he's just That's fucking all she is. David. She's she, literally all she, she is, and she, she literally she gets called. She gets introduced and, like, this is my girlfriend. Hi. She doesn't yeah. appear for like 30 minutes. Then she comes back she doesn't in do anything for stands most of the in movie. the background. And, it and then cuts her arm off or something. The, the, basically, the next scene where she's important is where she gets like killed. <laughs> I mean, that that kind of is like the original though, right? In some ways. But I guess they have more... The, they sort of establish more of, more of a camaraderie something. though in the original. Yeah, that's the true. Characters have sort yeah. of... you can you ha- They have relationships to each other. There's that in this movie, but it's just a lot less... It's it's a lot less developed and it's a bit, you know, not as good. Kind of soulless. There's no there's no you know, there was there yeah, was there was real character in the other movie, right? There was I mean, yeah, Bruce Campbell he really had that sort of performance that that phys- I mean his first one the, the the other ones were better, but the first movie even he was like, you know, physically acting, he kind of had that presence on the screen. But like no one, and, there's nothing else them, like that in this movie. And yeah. everyone else in that movie was just like hamming it up because they're all not very good actors. But like it worked because they were just so bad, it was good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but in this one, it's just like boring, boring character drama that doesn't get you to care about these characters in the slightest. And then no. later on in the movie, we're expected to care about these characters because it, it actually yeah. like tries to be emotional sometimes. But I don't care about these characters because they're no. boring. <laughs> and David's the worst. They have no substance. Yeah. <laughs> David has nothing to. The only thing that David has to him is that the, the the whole sort of premise of the character drama part of this movie is that David and his sister. It's between David and his sister. His sister Mia is a fucking meth addict or drug addict, no. and it's an intervention. They go to the cabin. Um, all her friends, you know, they 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 get her to chuck the meth down a well for some reason, um, and do it. that that will do the job. And then you know she's getting withdrawal symptoms, and they're trying to support her. But David comes for the first time. Apparently, he's been a very unsupportive brother, and that they kind of play that out for the rest of the movie. And we're supposed to care about their relationship, their their, their yeah. you know how he he was a shitty brother, and something about their mum dying. And then at the end, it's just I mean I know I'm skipping to the end here, but it's yeah, like David being so fucking unlikable. Like at the end, they, they they inject this really what I thought was so obnoxious, you know, sad emotional music. And he's supposed <laughs> to like be like, oh, you know, I realized I was a bad brother. And then he just goes in there and fucking explodes the house with him inside it. And that's his character arc. Like, yeah. So. Man. Uh, a bit uh, of a rant. N- not even mentioning all of the incredibly idiotic things that he does. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That, that I think was actually, I mean, he's in the top yeah. tier of dumb horror characters. He's in the yeah. S. He's in the S category of I am a stupid idiot. <laughs> <laughs> if they just changed the tone of the movie, it would have been funny. But it's too serious. It takes itself too serious. Yeah. Like what? What are some of the things he did? Like the classic in the first movie. It's like the possessed um, characters. Well, you know all of a sudden be unpossessed and be like, why did you hurt me? Or, and he falls you know? for it every single yeah. time. It happens five yeah. times. And every yeah. single time he believes them. Not once <laughs> does he question it. Yeah. There's probably, I think once. there's even, one time where he's like, yeah. you're not my sister. But, and then he doesn't even believe it. We, I think we were both face palming like a lot. <laughs> it was really, it was frustrating. It was frustrating. Like honestly frustrating. I, like in you know, Evil Dead 2 where that girl, I forgot, I forgot her name now, but she's, she's one of the main characters and like her mother's under the thing. It's like, it's me, your mother. And she's like, you're not my mother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was great. I love that. <laughs> Instantly. <laughs> yeah that movie was honestly ahead of its time like i'm gonna be honest yeah that that was sick but this movie just completely misses it and yeah even in the first evil dead they eventually start like actually not believing the monster like the uh you know the possessed person they they start going now yeah now this bullshit like even after yeah the dad um, yeah every single time i guess we briefly go over what actually happens the pod's pretty similar to the original film I mean, yeah, you sort of went over a bit. The, they come to the thing, they're trying to stage an intervention or something, and then boring family drama ensues. But then they go into the basement 
and there's a bunch of dead cats dead because cats. at the beginning of the movie there was this previous exorcism that I kind of forgot about. I forgot about that. Yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> honestly, yeah, yeah. That you, you, I forgot about it now, but I'll mention something later about how much the editors think our attention span is. But uh, <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, in <laughs> that's the funny. yeah, some family killed their possessed daughter at the beginning of the movie, and that's basically all you know about that. Uh, and then they find the the aftermath, like David and Kurt Cobain find the aftermath of that in the basement. And they're like, oh, that's pretty gross. And then they get rid of all the dead cats because there's a lot of them. Yeah. It's like 30 dead cats. <laughs> just in the basement. <laughs> it was just and then Kurt Cobain kind of decides to do some reading on the uh, Necronomicon, which unfortunately does not have SpongeBob's face on it this time, which is automatically minus five points from the movie. But he, you know, he just goes through the book and then reads out the passages out loud. Ah. Oh, Kurt Cobain. Kurt Cobain, he was trying to inspire himself for his next next yeah, song. His next song. And uh, yeah, Mia gets possessed pretty quickly. Basically instantly. She, she yep. yeah. And, she goes. And, okay, her possession scene's pretty gross. It was, right? So she first like... Gets the POV monster makes an appearance. She kind of gets, you know, gets into her head, and then she f- goes outside, starts walking around in circles. And then she goes to the forest, and in the previous movies, that's where the t- tree rape scene would happen. Yeah, so there's sort of like a redo of that the scene, same. but it's way exactly. grosser. It's so much, yeah. Like it it, 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 she falls kind of into the into a you know, like, ta- a like gets tangled in all these branches, yeah, she gets tangled swampy in these vines, branches, and then the like, slimy. <laughs> what is it like a slime like branch it's or like a branch like it's a tendril and it goes right up the right up the, the place. crack <laughs> yeah right up that spot it's pretty gross and, uh, it's really yeah, it's actually really gross like we'll give them that yeah, yeah. like you said it's fucking that was that was a like, good scene crazy that was a good scene. Yeah. <laughs> what did you say? Like when, when it happens, she goes I, like, oh, mama. <laughs> well, mama. <laughs> oh, mama. That should have been her reaction. That would have been my reaction. I don't know why I thought it. it's like a catchphrase of like this character called Johnny Bravo. I can imagine Bruce Campbell saying that if it happened to him. As Ash. <laughs> oh, mama. Ash would totally say that. But yeah, yeah. Um, they bring her back to the house. They just think she's going through some withdrawal obviously not and then you get like 50 scenes where you can see the jump scares coming from a billion miles away like you know the classic looking in the mirror open the mirror close the mirror jump scare yeah (laughs) reading it literally even before anything happens that's how obvious they make it yeah yeah then oh and then David goes into a room. Mia's sitting on the bed. Mia's like, it's in the room with us. David leaves. And then we pan to the mirror again where it's jump scare. Uh, Jump scare. (laughs) Another one. And just maybe we just become too desensitized to this stuff. But, you know, still, it's just not creative. There's more creative ways to do it, I think. Which is the whole like premise of the first movie or the, the, yeah. the yeah, series I mean, the in general, the first right? movie, you've got this weird shit going on. <laughs> yeah. and, we, and and then like the, the, the first movie sort of like set the standard for the cliches. So I, yeah, but this yeah. movie just retread, just does them again when you've seen them a billion times before. That's it. Like, rem- I mean, what do you think about remakes in general? Do you think that... I think they can be done well. The... Um, you know, Ocean's Eleven is a remake of like a Frank Sinatra movie. <laughs> oh, I didn't even know that. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I think, you know, when you remake a movie that was bad in the first place, but had like a good concept, I think that's a good ethic for remaking movies. I don't usually yeah. do that though, but that's just a, how I do it usually. There are good that remakes, much some better, yeah. good remakes. They they escape me at the moment aside from so yeah it can be done well but it just seems like the majority of the time it isn't it just isn't done well <laughs> yeah, you kind of have to innovate on the original movie or like come in with like a new approach not just yeah. you know it's the same movie but 
more gruesome with updated visual effects and the less fun. Yeah. How would you how would you do a remake, an Evil Dead remake? I wouldn't. I don't think it needs it. <laughs> That's a good answer. <laughs> yeah, it's like Disney remaking every animated movie they've ever made just for cash. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And like stealing those movies in the first place, stealing the fucking stories for those movies. Yeah, yeah but at least, the, at least the original ones were good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> like point. the Lion King is a classic. The remake Lion King is not a classic. <laughs> <laughs> I actually saw that uh, in in cinemas because my parent like it was the only thing on at that time, and we watched it. And um, even my like my parents are usually pretty lenient. My mum will enjoy pretty much any movie. Um, uh, that's like family friendly enough. She also gets pretty scared at, <laughs> at uh, yeah. horror movies. Yeah, but she would enjoy every movie, and she didn't. She even was just like, uh, yeah, it wasn't that good. <laughs> yeah, you just rather <laughs> watch the remake. original movie. Like, yeah. what's the, what is the point of a movie existing when you could just go watch the original? Like, I remember when the Mulan remake came out. Me and my that's sister, right. yeah, we yeah. just watched the original movie again. It's like, oh, I don't really feel any desire to go and watch this new one because we've already got Mulan. <laughs> it's already good. The actual I've, Mulan. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. already a good movie. I don't need to see anything more. So when it came out, did you go, oh, wait, let's just watch the original again? Like yeah, when the remake exactly, came yeah. out. Yeah, the remake <laughs> came out. I was like, oh, it's on Disney+. Plus. Uh, why don't we just rewatch Mulan? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Fucking 2 million IQ, I say. That's a... You're a wise, wise person. There was a, there was a part where David and Mia, Mia was sitting in the corner of like a dark corner of the room. And then David comes over and she sort of all of a sudden, you know, just goes, ah, <laughs> it's no build up. And it's just like a really cheap jump scare. Yeah. It'd be funny if you just played on that. And like, I don't know, every time something happened, like you coughed or sneezed, you'd be done <laughs> in that like obnoxiously in your face jump scare yeah. way. I do, I do. Oh, oh, Fuck. Oh. Yeah, all oh, right. I, I was going to say, I'm going to go back to the thing where there's the beginning of the movie and then five minutes into the actual movie, we get an immediate flashback to the beginning of the movie because apparently the editors don't have faith in us remembering <laughs> what happened. Like they they yeah, look at they, they go zero. down into the basement and they look at the charred pole where the girl got like burnt and then we, we see the flashback. I, oh, I honestly, if they didn't do that, I could not have put two and two together. I yeah, could I could not have, have told actually, you what happened. That's crazy. Who would have guessed that that's connected? And also, I think the other example is like the dog, the dog called Grandpa. Yeah. The dog is fucking injured and bleeding. And then um And then we get a we get a scene where just so Mia hacking at the dog, but we we the 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 action of her doing it is already implied because we have a shot of dog and a bloody hammer. A bloody so we hammer, already know yeah. that something has happened. We don't need to see Mia doing it. We already know what's happened. Like they it's, they think we're it's stupid. Just like, <laughs> it's the yeah. audience. Yeah, they really do think the audience are fucking dumbies. It's I mean, just it's, like isn't it just everything like, onto a silver platter? You know, they ever hear show not tell? I mean, they, they do show, yeah. but they show too much. It's just it's like film theory one hundred and one. Not that you should like base all your films off film theory, but like. You shouldn't do that. <laughs> There's some things that just really, yeah. It's completely <laughs> unnecessary. It's, it's kind of disrespectful. Like, who do you think we are? Yeah, yeah. I think we're imbeciles. You think we're, that, with, we're dumb. Oh, what? Who did it? Who did it? Not like there's only one possessed person at this current point in time who could have done it. Yeah. Bloody hammer. I wonder <laughs> what she did it with. The bloody hammer on the floor next to the dead dog? I have no idea. <laughs> it's like, it's like it's they like showed the bloody hammer. Than the, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Cluedo, the yeah, they bloody hammer inside the, room. the shed. <laughs> they got to go into the room, pull out the envelope. So it was Mia with the bloody hammer inside the shed. <laughs> inside the shed. <laughs> Fuck. Turns out the flashback, it was actually... It was actually, it was actually Plum, David. Or the Colonel Plum Mustard. Doctor. Colonel Mustard did it with the trophy in the dining room. <laughs> Brutal. I didn't know you played Cluedo as well. How popular is that? I think that's... It's pretty Cluedo's popular. Fairly popular. It's, it's, a, board game. It's, a, it's a popular board game. It's a solid <laughs> board game. They've got the. They should make the Evil Dead version of that game. That would be fucking sick. Why, yeah. Why is that there no good... Cluedo movie adaptation? <laughs> yeah. Cluedo movie adaptation. It's like meta, where like the characters are getting picked up by hands. 
and placed into the different scenes. That's essentially what Scream is. I think Scream is kind of just Cluedo the movie. I mean, I will give credit for, I mean, we already did give credit, but there is a couple blood scenes which are pretty good. Like, um, I think Mia, yeah. at some point, she starts spewing out blood <laughs> onto, yeah, I, I, onto we, the we nurse. Started, we started popping off because we wanted to see those gross blood spills. That's, that's what we're there for. Yeah. And I will say that the effects in this movie are quite impressive. There are some pretty gnarly yeah. stuff. There like there's, there's this one uh, scene yeah. that I thought was pretty great where Mia shoves the chainsaw into the final bad guy who's not really even a character into their head and, and it sort of like just starts spraying with blood. It's pretty great. Yeah, yeah, the blood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, like when Ash chopped off yeah. his uh, hand. Yeah. <laughs> But the, blood yeah, coming the, out. the 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 chainsaw just goes right into the head and just starts exploding with blood. It's great. Um, it is great. I mean, I I liked the one that I got really grossed out by. So they did a good job. Was I think they, I can't even explain this the context, but they're like in the basement and Kurt is oh like David's in the David another stupid thing related to this. David goes into the fucking basement where her possess his possessed sister is Doesn't without bring any a weapon. weapon or anything. There's a montage. He, There's a montage where he's grabbing weapons and then immediately he goes into the basement without any weapons. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> With a flashlight. That's it. Ah! <laughs> yeah. Fucking idiot. And he's down there and then uh, of course he gets attacked. Um and then I think it's the Mia wrestles with either him or the Kurt Cobain character comes down and like saves David, yeah. but like she starts licking a raise like a, a box cutter razor blade thing, and then her tongue splits in half. And I thought that was uh, pretty. She gross. does that earlier. She does that earlier. She I think. Does, oh, is it earlier? With the, okay, um, maybe it's not in that. The girlfriend scene. character. Oh, it's with the girlfriend character yeah, she, in the basement. That was okay, pretty good. That's true. That was a good scene. That was yeah. That was gross. Where that's she true. cuts the tongue in half and then gives her a, gives her a smooch. A bit of a smooch on her body. Yeah, yeah, that's the that's the bit where the David comes down. And he's like, "Come here, pretty boy. I'll suck your dick." <laughs> yeah. So that's best scene in the movie. S- that that's the best scene. Yeah, that was so unhinged. <laughs> it was great. <laughs> yeah, the the actress for Mia if it, playing the bad guy. She has a good time. She spends a lot of it just underneath the trap door, just making weird faces, and they're pretty good. Yeah, yeah. They are pretty good. <laughs> Staring so, at them yeah. like. <laughs> She's definitely the the best performance yep. by far. <laughs> she gets she kind of gets to do something. She I gets mean, to play the good guy and the bad guy. Yeah, that's unfair. I mean, Ash Ash, Ash got that right. Ash got everything. Yeah. Ash got Ash everything. Got to play everything. <laughs> he got to play. <laughs> he literally had a movie where he fought himself. <laughs> yeah. Even more. Yeah, and also this movie. I mean, not that the other movies make sense, but this one's trying to be more of a, a you know, yeah, it's trying to be more serious, fucking serious horror movie, and it makes zero sense. I mean, some horror movies don't make much sense, but this makes fucking reverse has reverse logic. It goes the other way around. Like, I, I you know, people Mia gets possessed, and then at the end of the movie, I guess the, again, it's probably like the power of fucking love or something, or. I don't know, but she just yeah. becomes unpossessed, and there's yeah. no explanation. There's nothing. She so. comes unpossessed. Yeah, in the in the previous movies, it has like the tone. It's the difference in tone. The tone in those previous yeah. movies is so silly and campy that when something completely, just absolutely bonkers happens, you go along with it because it's it's just part of the movie and it adds to the experience. But this movie is trying to have that dark and gritty tone, and when something stupid happens. You're just like, that's stupid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the movie was a bit of a game of chicken, trying to guess when Ash would appear or if he yeah. would appear we at like, all oh, because okay. he's in the it, list. We, yeah. The closer we got to the end, it's like, oh, maybe he's just going to deus ex machina. And then that would yeah. be kind of lame. Even though we'd be glad to see him, like from a storytelling, it would be kind of lame. But then he just doesn't show up. And then for some reason... I just let the credits run because the the music was actually kind of good. Like the, the composer just went ham. It's like this Dark Souls boss music and it's sort of insane. So I let the credits run while we were talking. And then the the tape guy from the original movie starts talking. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. Uh, and then we, I let it, kept, kept letting it run and kept, kept talking. And then the movie stops. And then Ash... <laughs> 
the peers just says groovy and it was we both just started screaming we it was fucking fantastic popped off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it was fucking amazing it was so good so that's why this movie is an 11 out of 10 it's the greatest movie of all time <laughs> <laughs> that's literally without what that we scene, said though without that scene probably gonna drop that back to a five it's pretty low. Four out of four or five out of ten. Yeah, <laughs> there is some good stuff here, but I also think most of it's sort of just, yeah, maybe a four. <laughs> With Ash, eleven, best movie of all time. Yeah, <laughs> greatest. If you're listening on Spotify, follow us on YouTube and TikTok. Our TikTok is at ffr underscore podcast. Um, and if you're on YouTube, follow us on Spotify. See you next week. See you next week. <laughs>